Do you know what I've found? I've found that life is full of surprises. In fact, my walk with God has been full of surprises. I've made plans. I've written down my goals and dreams. I expected everything to go right. I expected things to go my way. Some things did. Some things didn't. And through all of my wins and losses, I've learned that we can make plans. We can write down our goals and our targets. However, here's what the Bible says. Proverbs 19, verse 21. Many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. You see, God's purpose for your life is what will prevail. God's plan for your life is what will prevail. Now, it's not easy for us to accept that at times because God's plan requires us to trust Him. It requires us to walk blindly, so to speak, in this natural world. But at the same time, walk with 2020 vision, with the eyes of faith. Jonah ran away from God's plan, and he ended up in the belly of a fish. Noah followed God's plan, and he was safe. Lot's wife deviated from God's plan, and she was turned into a pillar of salt. Joseph trusted in God and in his plans, and he became the ruler of Egypt. Samson decided not to follow God's instruction and he lost his supernatural strength. Joshua stuck to God's plan, and the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. Do you see where I'm going with this? God's plan will always work out for good. But when you deviate from this plan, when you reject his plan, then you leave yourself open. You leave yourself open to the attacks of the enemy. You leave yourself open to the judgment of God. Trusting in God's plan isn't always an easy thing to do because it requires more faith than it does sight. In other words, you have to believe even though you don't see. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. And on this topic of trust, when you think about it, we've been conditioned to trust our natural senses. We've been conditioned to trust in science. We're taught to trust information or advice that comes from credible sources that can be verified and fact-checked. But trusting in God requires us to go against everything we've been conditioned to do. Trusting in the Lord requires you to ignore what you can see or understand. Trusting in Him means that at times you take the doctor's advice, but accept that he or she doesn't have the final say. I would even go as far as saying trusting in God means ignoring what the news anchor is saying or what the economy is doing. I encourage you to let go. Let go of the need to know. Let go of the need for control. Let go of the whys, the hows, and whens, and simply say, Not my will, Lord, but your will be done. That's trusting in the Lord with all your heart, mind, and soul. In the Gospel of Luke, the Bible gives us a verse with just seven words. But those seven words should be a reason for joy in the hearts of every believer. The Bible says in Luke chapter 1 verse 37, For nothing will be impossible with God. The prophet Jeremiah in chapter 32 verse 17 said, Ah, Lord God, it is you who have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. God has a way of doing what we believe is impossible. And because He is God, He uses the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. 
He uses the weak things of the world to shame the strong. Here are just a few examples of God making the impossible possible. The Israelites marched around the walls of Jericho, and on the seventh day, they marched seven times around the walls and then finally blew their trumpets and raised a great shout, and the walls of Jericho fell. Now to the unbeliever, this doesn't make sense. Why would an army choose not to use their weapons, but instead to march around the walls of a city every single day for seven days? Why not go directly into battle? Why expend so much energy? However, us as believers, we know that God's ways are not like our ways. What seemed impossible became possible when God was involved. The Bible tells us of more instances that God made possible the impossible. He split the Red Sea so that the Israelites could walk on dry land. Sarah got pregnant in her 80s. A virgin named Mary gave birth to Jesus. Time and time again, God has shown himself that he is not bound by the laws of nature. He is not bound by physics or gravity. He isn't bound by time. He is the God of the impossible. He can do far more abundantly than all that we can ask or think. And I would like to speak to someone today and encourage them to believe. Believe that Jesus Christ can still do the impossible in your life, in your home, and for your family. Believe that Jesus Christ can still change circumstances and make them work out for your good. And let me tell you that in this life, out of all the people that we will ever encounter, or ever meet, there is only one who will never disappoint us. There is only one who can truly help us, who can truly love us and meet our soul's deepest needs. There is only one who has ever uttered the words, I will never leave you nor forsake you, and his name is Jesus Christ. There is none like him. There is no one who can rival him. There is none on this earth or any person who has ever lived who could come close to Jesus Christ. He loves with an unconditional love and he speaks with unmatchable wisdom. He is the Good Shepherd. And so with this understanding, let us pray. Lord Jesus, we bow down to you today. We invite you to work what is impossible and make it possible for us. Your presence casts out all fear. Your presence heals. It renews and it restores. At the sound of your name, demons tremble. With the authority that is in your name, Miracles can still happen today. Situations can still turn around today. Jesus Christ, we say you are the Messiah, the risen Son of God. Nothing is impossible with you. You fed 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish. You brought Lazarus back from the dead. You spoke to a storm and commanded it to be still. Lord, we desire to come face to face with your presence. We desire to have an encounter with you, an encounter that will leave us transformed forever. Father, our prayer together with everyone listening is that we would meet you, Lord. We desire to meet the one who can offer amazing grace, the one who can heal our deepest scars. 
Matthew chapter 17 verse 20 says, Because of your little faith, for truly I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Lord Jesus, we lift up our faith. We raise our faith in expectation that your hand will move in our lives. By faith, we believe that you will move in our lives. You will move in our homes and in the lives of our families. By faith, we believe that you are the only one who can renew us. You can restore and rejuvenate us. Isaiah 55 verse 6 says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. May the Holy Spirit help us to seek and find you. May the Holy Spirit help us as we chase after you, Lord. We choose to forsake the things of this world and to seek you, Jesus. We invite you to come into our hearts and set a blaze, a passion, and a desire for righteousness. More of you, Lord, and less of me. Let that become the cry in our hearts. For the one who is broken, for the one who has been abandoned one too many times, we invite you, King Jesus, to do the impossible. Do what no man can do and heal their hearts. Lord Jesus, for those who need healing in their hearts, we ask that you mend every broken part within them. Make them whole again. A woman who once had an issue of blood met you and she knew you to be a healer. Do the same in our lives, Lord. Meet us at our point of need. Your word in John 15 verse 15 says, No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. Thank you for accepting us, Lord Jesus. Only you can make us whole. Only you can feel that longing for love and companionship deep within our souls. You are a God of miracles. You are the God of the impossible. You alone have the authority to speak into our lives and to calm the storms that we face. We praise you. We glorify you. We say that we need you, Lord. Thank you for listening to this prayer. In the mighty and precious name of Jesus Christ I pray, Amen. Many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. For nothing will be impossible with God. Ah, Lord God, it is you who have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. Because of your little faith, for truly I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. No longer do I call you servants. For the servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my father, 
I have made known to you.